Okay, I don't know about you guys, but I had no idea that Boulder had an audible emergency alert system that blared sirens and warnings in case of emergency. Apparently, some of you didn't either. Well, on night two of that flood last week at 10 p.m., things were getting a little serious. And this is what I heard. Get away from Boulder Creek right now. You have been mandatorily evacuated. This is where I was standing on my front porch in that moment. <laughs> this is where those citywide speakers were two blocks down the street. And this is the creek that we now know to be a raging river. This is what my block looked like at that moment. My insides turned to ash. And I notice, standing up here with you guys, that I got some similar stuff going on. <laughs> yeah, my legs are shaking. Um, my stomach, yeah, I am aware of it. And I feel some lovely beads of sweat happening under my armpits. <laughs> Whew. Fear is here. You know, early on, we learn some clear and capable coping mechanisms for dealing with fear. We talk about it rather than feel it. We minimize it. Hey, it's no big deal. We conquer it or push through it. We avoid it. Forget it. I'll go do something else. We fake it. Hey, I'm not afraid. Or we numb out with alcohol, TV, or our drug of choice. Mainly, we manage fear. Over the course of our lives, we figure out that list of the things that scare us, and then we enlist the support of our friends, our significant other, and even ourselves to stay away from those hot spots. Stop doing these things I'm afraid of because I don't want to feel this way. Why do we do that? Because the feeling of fear sucks. So... I'm completely familiar with these fear mitigation techniques, but lately I've tried to do something completely different. My practice is to dive even deeper into my own fear, experiencing the sensations in my body and my heart, truly experiencing the sense of the worst case scenario of what might happen if my deepest fears come to pass. I push myself to the edge of my fear, to the next cliff. And when something that scared me last week doesn't scare me anymore this week, I try to push myself to the next edge of the next cliff. Why in the world do I do this? Because for me, and maybe for you, fear and discomfort are the single greatest signals I have that I am learning, evolving, and embracing new possibilities. And while I'm at this, I stay really aware of the fact that my fear edges are my fear edges because fear is specific to each of us. It is also a very popular area of projection. People now and then tell me, Sue, you seem so courageous. I know that what they're saying is, Sue, if I lived my life the way you live your life, Lord knows I would be afraid. See, the fact is, I'm actually aware that there are a wide range of things that don't scare me at all, like breaking my own heart again and again, like deciding that my last job was my last job and stepping into the unknown, like choosing to get divorced twice. Yeah, very few people know that. And while we're here, I want to share with you a few things that do scare me, like asking for help, getting involved with a man who is as powerful as I am, <laughs> dressing up like a girl, going to a party alone, leaning against a wall, and just waiting, disclosing more about myself in a conversation than the other person discloses about themselves. And lately, 
I have a whole new teacher in the area of fear. His name is Felix. He's super cute, happens to be single, funny, athletic, charismatic, and he's a paraplegic. Now, after half a lifetime of working on this relationship thing, I thought I had it down, but this is a whole new game. Ever imagine whether and how a paraplegic might have an intimate relationship or what a leg looks like after 18 years of no muscular development? This is scary. And so, I'm trying my own practice. I'm staying vulnerable. We talk openly about topics I have blown by with other men. I'm giving up control and creating space for what might happen that I couldn't possibly plan on, much less manipulate. You see, Felix is my teacher right now in the area of fear, but my true long-term life partner is fear itself. And for me, it is a faithful, omnipresent, loving companion. It's here with me right now looking out at you knowing that I chose this topic because it was the single scariest thing I could imagine sharing with you tonight and wondering... Do you guys know where your next fear edge is? Come on, let's go. Thanks.